Coming up on Loyola News Chicago, breaking news from the office of the president, the Ramblers basketball team makes an appearance in the postseason, and find out Sister Jean's top picks for NCAA March Madness. You won't want to miss this. From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Katrina Lim. And I'm Greta Patrick. And we're starting with breaking news about the university president. Father Michael Garanzini is stepping down as president and CEO of Loyola University Chicago. The surprise announcement came this morning in an email to students and faculty. However, this doesn't mean he's leaving the Loyola community entirely. This move allows Father Garanzini to concentrate on his position as the Jesuit Secretary for Higher Education. His resignation takes effect June 30th. Father Garanzini has been at Loyola since 2001 and was appointed Secretary of Higher Education in 2011. The news of Father Garanzini's resignation came as a shock to many people on campus. Hope Salmon went out to the Water Tower campus and heard a variety of reactions. The news of Father Garanzini's resignation spread quickly throughout Loyola. We took to the streets to find out what the students are thinking. I was really surprised about his resignation. I actually had no idea, but that's like horrible news. <laughs> um, I'm really shocked that he resigned. When I look at the Reimagine program and everything else, I just think he's done such wonders here for everybody. I, it was disbelief. I, I actually didn't see it coming. I was quite surprised to see the fact that he was moving on, but I think that this, I mean, there's, besides what with, I've read in the email, I'm sure that he has his reasons, and I'm sure that he's still going to have some sort of an involvement within the Loyola community, and I'm curious to see how involved he will be in the future. We also asked Loyola students how Father Garanzini impacted their time at Loyola. I think he, although I've never personally had the opportunity to talk to him, uh, I feel the impact of the decisions that he's made. <laughs> I, do, you know, I don't know. Any, I'm not really like religious, so I don't really follow like you know religious figures in uh, Loyola. This is going to give him what I think is time in between to think of more dreams and carry them out to a reality. And he always thinks thinking of other people, and he'll continue to do that too. Um, yeah, at the basketball games when he would come, like we would, you know, take pictures together, and he was always very welcoming, and he was very like into the Loyola um, community. So. And he has everybody's support too, and Father Garanzini will continue to support all of us. I know that. We are sad to see him leaving, but Father Garanzini will be with us until June 30th. Hope Salmon, Loyola New Chicago. The Board of Trustees has asked current Provost John Pellicero to serve as the interim president until they find a replacement for Father Garanzini. And we want to know what you think. Tweet us your reaction to the President Garanzini's resignation at, at Loyola TV. Student government elections are quickly approaching and students will not only vote for who will lead but also for what they'll drink and how much they'll pay. The polls will be open March 25th through 26th. Students can vote from the comfort of their own residence halls since the ballot will be sent out via email. The results of the election will be announced on the 27th. For more information on the candidates, go to luc.edu slash sglc slash spring elections. The two teams running for president and vice president are Mariana Chavez with Michael Fasulo and Amanda Koenig with Amir Kadri. Two major referendums will be on the ballot. They are whether Metropolis Coffee will replace Starbucks Coffee on campus and whether to fund the Magist Scholarship, which will add $2.50 to the student activity fee. So, check your emails for the ballot on March 25th and be sure to cast your vote. And one of the biggest issues on the ballot is whether or not Loyola will continue to serve Starbucks Coffee or if they'll make the switch to Metropolis Coffee. The university has debated this switch before, and Benita Ginderella asked Metropolis how they feel about Loyola serving their coffee again. Loyola's cafes have been serving Starbucks coffee on campus for two years, but students are asking for a change. 
The student government of Loyola Chicago is working with Aramark to hopefully bring Metropolis Coffee back to campus. Right now the university itself isn't doing anything to bring Metropolis back. It's more the student, it's a student driven issue. The cafe supplied coffee to Loyola for several years until 2012 when a Loyola representative called and abruptly ended their contract. She called and said that they had switched the whole campus over to Starbucks starting the next day. And uh, we had no notice, we had no idea, honestly. Metropolis Coffee has been a staple of the Rogers Park community since 2003. The shop is a fair trade store, meaning that the shop only buys from suppliers who give their workers fair living wages. Metropolis's fair trade policy is one of the reasons why the student government is pushing for its return. Right now, with the university constructing the new five-year strategic plan, social justice is very important in that, and that's one thing that we're focusing on, and uh, one of the reasons we want to bring Metropolis back on campus. Loyola students also like that Metropolis is a part of the community. In a recent survey conducted by the student government, 85% of students say they would visit a locally owned shop rather than a national chain. It's always good to have the local chain back into the school, so I definitely support it. If Loyola switches back, Metropolis wants the prices to remain the same or be cheaper than the Starbucks coffee currently offered, so students can afford it. We believe in everybody should have access to great coffee. It's a basic human right. Student leaders are meeting with Metropolis and Aramark to determine the next steps to bring Metropolis Coffee back to campus. Benita Gingerella, Loyola News Chicago. If Loyola does make the switch, students can pick up the coffee starting next fall. The Israel and Palestine conflict is one that has continued to be talked about since Israel came to be. A passionate group of students, a part of various registered student organizations, got together to form the Divestment Coalition to address the Israeli-Palestine issue. Students for Justice in Palestine, or SJP, just launched a campaign called Loyola Divest. The campaign asks Loyola to remove their investments from corporations that profit from human rights abuses and violations committed against the Palestinians in Israel. SJP has been tabling all week to get students to sign a petition to support their campaign. In spring 2014, SJP launched a similar campaign in which they received 1,000 signatures but failed to pass the legislation through student government due to great opposition. This time, they hope to pass a new... Is this a permanent act? It doesn't have to be. I think it can definitely be something, you know, where, where we're simply, you know, just trying to change the course of action that these corporations are taking. We're trying to make them understand that they have to be socially responsible in order to compete in the global marketplace. It is not fair to Palestinian students for this institution to invest in corporations that are killing our families and causing such immense suffering. Uh, Raytheon is a weapons manufacturer. They provide guided missiles to the Israeli military. The legislation set forth by the coalition also demands for Loyola to be more transparent and socially responsible with their investments. Members of the coalition urge students that are confused about the issue to attend their events, explaining the conflict happening this week. The Divest campaign has caused quite a controversy on campus, where members of Hillel, the Jewish organization on campus, feel like they're being targeted. They say that the resolution put forth by the Divest Coalition to the student government is an attack on their Jewish identity. Holding one state, one foreign government, more responsible than any other foreign government, including your own, is biased in my opinion. And it's, I don't think it's something that our students should support. More importantly, it has caused divide on this campus. It's caused our students here to feel very segregated, to feel very targeted, and to have their opinion silenced. We think that this issue requires dialogue. It's what our button is, it's dialogue, not divest. We want dialogue, we want communication. That's the foundation of this. Every time in the last 60 years that there has been progress made towards, towards peace in the Middle East, it's been through dialogue and conversation amongst leaders. And this divest campaign lays blame on one side wholly and would shut down any dialogue. I think that it is very clearly singling out one country. Um, that is unfair to that country and those people. Um, and both sides are being affected by both of this um, and by the conflict. Um, but I think that it is doing a lot more hurt than it is doing good um, because it's really hurting both communities right now and both people are hurting. Um, but I think that 
the only way that we can move from that and get better is to not create a bigger divide within our Four Hillel members presented their side to the student government, explaining why the legislation should not be passed. Whether or not the legislation will pass will be determined at next week's Senate meeting, where it will be debated before going to a vote. Around this time of year, Loyola celebrates much of the diversity and culture on campus. Last week, we told you about Jewish Awareness Week, and this week is Islam Appreciation Week. Lauren Smith gives us an in-depth look at one particular Appreciation Week event. The Muslim Student Association held events to capture most elements of the Islamic culture. This was all to celebrate their annual Appreciation Week. But one event in particular that caught my eye was the Walk a Mile in Her Hijab experience. And what a sight to see. Women from all walks of life met at the Damon Center to dress in hijabs, and for some, it was for the very first time. Over 100 participants opened a little pink bag with hijabs inside and pledged to wear the garment for the entire day. I even took advantage of the rare opportunity. The Muslim Student Association held 11 events this week to honor Islam appreciation, but the Walk a Mile in Her Hijab event specifically attacked negative stereotypes many Muslim women face. Just to clear that misconception, try to give an understanding of what hijab actually means um, to women. You're putting yourself in a position for women, at least across campus, in a position where you're willing to understand what it kind of feels like on a, on a daily basis for these Muslim women and but the more important part of that is why. MSA also used the day to connect with each other and to sell tasty samosas. One of the last events for Islam Appreciation Week is a lecture by Professor Hena Hazam of the University of Texas on the impacts of contemporary Muslim ideas and practices. Back to you at the desk. <laughs> Islam Appreciation Week ends with a culmination dinner. This week, is al this week also marks the end of the Filipino experience. Loyola is reacting to the racially charged events happening in our country. The school is hosting various talks for students to share their thoughts about the battle against racism. One event recently addressed the racial divide in the U.S. The panel brought up issues of prejudice and how we should try to embrace diversity. Loyola professors and students we talked to agreed that addressing these issues is important. This was the call to how do we unite ourselves? How do we come together and really work at solving something that is really harming not just the people who are getting killed, but the people who are actually doing the killing? People like to say racist things or whatnot to make it the butt of a joke or uh, to make themselves sound edgy or what have you, but um, it really doesn't benefit anybody in the end. I definitely think there should be open discussion, um, a place to, if not talk about it, but then also maybe just discuss your feelings over it, and it's an emotional um, uh, topic. You can join the discussion about racism and how we should respond to it by going to these events. Loyola is hosting an event to remember the historic march in Selma on March 25th and the case for reparations on the 31st. And we have a follow-up to the story we told you last week about racist chants being sung by members of the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity at the University of Oklahoma. The fraternity will require all of its current members to complete diversity training. Brian Ayers is the executive director of SAE and spoke here in Chicago about changes the fraternity is making. All of the chapters will be formally reviewed. A director of diversity and inclusion will be appointed and a hotline will be available to students who report offensive behavior. A Chicago native, native had to endure some pretty crazy police tactics this St. Patrick's Day. Third year University of Virginia student Martise Johnson was arrested outside an Irish pub in Virginia. This cell phone video, courtesy of the University of Virginia's Cavalier Daily, shows officers holding him down and forcefully pushing him into the sidewalk. Photos from this scene show Johnson's head bleeding and the Cavalier Daily reports he needed 10 stitches. Johnson was charged with resisting arrest and threatening officers with force. A police department says officers wanted to detain Johnson after he was turned away from the pub and that's when he resisted. There will be a state investigation into the use of force in the arrest. 
Here's a look at how residents of Rogers Park are showing their appreciation for local police officers. Residents tied over 100 blue ribbons up around Rogers Park neighborhood. Ribbons were tied around trees and on the Rogers Park Police District on Clark Street. The facilitator of the ribbon hanging told DNA Info that the ribbons were a way to show gratitude to local police officers and the officers are very happy for the recognition. The ribbons were hung in light of the recent events surrounding the Ferguson Police Department. Last week, we told you about powdered alcohol making its way into the market, but the new drink may not be heading to Chicago anytime soon. Alderman Edward Burke introduced an ordinance to ban the selling and possession of powdered alcohol within the city of Chicago. Three states have already banned the substance. If Alderman Burke's ordinance does not pass, powdered alcohol could be on Chicago shelves starting this summer. Coming up on Loyola News Chicago, the Loyola men's basketball team is in its postseason competition. We'll tell you how long it's been since they last played postseason. And find out how Loyola is keeping one tradition alive. <laughs> Hummus? Iwan, just Iwan. Just I'll pay you money. I've got, I've got this money. Here, please. Please take the money, please. Let me see. But I'm tired. It's been quite a while since something exciting has happened with men's basketball. We go to Maria Sharkowski with the latest in sports. Thanks, Greta. 30 years ago, Ronald Reagan was in office, Whitney Houston released her first album, and the Discovery Channel was launched in America. The 1984-85 season was also the last time the Ramblers men's basketball team made any postseason appearance. The Ramblers celebrated St. Patrick's Day by hosting Ryder University in the first round of the College Basketball Invitational. To add even more excitement, the Ramblers won. The Ramblers opened up the first half with the lead over the Broncos, thanks to an alley-oop and a one-handed dunk by Dante Ingram. Devin Turk then feeds Christian Thomas for the two-handed slam on the very next Rambler possession. Ryder Xavier Lundy immediately answered on the other end with one of his game-high five three-pointers. The Ramblers and Broncos traded baskets for most of the half, but the Broncos took a 36-31 halftime lead. Ryder continued its strong play in the second half as the Broncos extended their lead to eight, led by Xavier Lundy. Milton Doyle scored 20 of his game-high 22 points in the second half as he led a Rambler comeback and cut the deficit to two. The Ramblers held on to the lead and took the game with a final score of 62-59. The Ramblers will host Oral Roberts in the second round of the College Basketball Invitational on Monday, March 23rd. Following last week's loss to Lewis University, men's volleyball is back to a winning streak, defeating both The Ohio State University on Saturday and Grand Canyon University last night in Gentile. Number 2 Loyola won the first game in a two-game series against Grand Canyon. Junior Thomas Jeske led the Ramblers with 12 kills, and freshman Jeff Jendrick had 9 kills. Ramblers took the match three sets to zero and will play Grand Canyon once again tonight in Gentile, Gentile Arena. Twenty years ago yesterday, only two words were needed to shake the Bulls fans and basketball fans around the world. I'm back. Michael Jordan announced his return to basketball, the NBA, and the Bulls. MJ retired before the 1993-94 season to pursue a career in baseball, but announced his return for the 1995 season. MJ would lead the Bulls to win six NBA championships, as well as an NBA record 72 regular season wins in the 1995 season. Bulls players today continue to win awards as Joakim Noah received the February NBA Cares Community Assist Award. Kaiser Permanente presented the award to Noah in recognition for his anti-violence campaign. Now, back to the Ramblers and their postseason basketball run. 
Isra El Hawani went out to the Water Tower campus to find out how much support there is for the Ramblers. The Loyola men's basketball team has been playing exceptionally well this season. And even though they didn't win Arch Madness, they earned their way to a postseason game for the first time in 30 years. We're out here asking Ramblers what they think about this exciting news. Hearing that we are making such great strides with our basketball team and our volleyball team and, every, and all of our other teams uh, makes it an even more exciting environment to be in. I was actually at the uh, Riders game this past Tuesday. Um, is, uh, in my opinion, it's definitely a big deal to make the postseason after a uh, season long of hard work. So definitely congrats to them. I think it's awesome. Um, I originally went to the University of Illinois. I was a huge fan of basketball there. Um, I'm a huge basketball fan in general. Um, so I'd be very interested to go see the uh, Ramblers play. I feel like this is a really exciting um, event for them and that there should be support and I would love to be there and help, especially as a freshman. It's nice going and seeing a huge school, like all of us coming together and supporting one another. Seems like the Ramblers are very proud of the basketball team's performance and are looking forward to supporting them at their game Monday night. Israel Halawani, Loyola, New Chicago. Well, it may not be any NCAA March Madness, but I'm pretty happy that the Ramblers are in the postseason. Yeah, it's so exciting to see them doing so well. Definitely. Thanks, Maria. No problem. According to the Phoenix, Loyola's Quinlan School of Business is just $30 million short of their $100 million fundraising goal. The temporary dean of the School of Business says the funds are meant for scholarships, research buildings, and improving current business programs. Although Loyola heavily campaigns for donations to the business school, it neglects to do so for its other schools, according to an editorial in the Phoenix. The College of Arts and Sciences is Loyola's biggest school. However, the Phoenix says that last year it received about $2 million in donations compared to Quinlan's nearly $16 million. And today, Loyola celebrated its fifth annual Wolf and Kettle Day. The event is held to thank donors who help offset education costs. Stands at the Damon Student Center and Terry Student Center offered students free popcorn and plush wolves to celebrate the generosity of our donors. Students also got the opportunity to write thank you notes to donors. Tuition covers only 74% of the cost of education for a year, with the 26% covered by outside donors. Today marks the point in the academic year when tuition runs out and the support from generous donors begins. The Loyola community will celebrate equality at the Women's Day Conference this weekend. According to the Phoenix, the event will kick off Saturday with music and poetry from student organizations. The Sunday event will feature speakers and workshops focusing on race, sexuality, and religion. The co-chair of the conference says feminism is flourishing on campus after the success of the We For She campaign earlier this semester. And coming up in our Loyola News Extra, is vinyl making a comeback? We go inside a local record store to find out more. Life is full of distractions. Ah, Some are minor. Rash, look, look who it is. Others are more severe. Music listeners, it's time to dust off those old records. Vinyl is back in a big way, and a local Chicago store is breathing new life into the format. In our Loyola News Extra today, Tom Hush shows us how vinyl records are getting another spin. It's a technology thought long dead by most, but vinyl records are making a comeback with the help of some dedicated outlets. 
Audio Archaeology, located in Rogers Park, is one such outlet. The store specializes in everything related to the vinyl era, such as retro stereo cabinets, classic records, tube TVs, and groovy glassware. Owner John Arnsdorf opened the store earlier this year, turning his hobby into a career. I had been uh, refurbishing record players and selling them pretty successfully. A lot of the older ones are made better and sound better than a lot of what they're making now, and there aren't that many people working on them. And uh, just kind of started thinking about turning that into a uh, business model. Originally, Arnsdorf planned on selling small amounts of vinyl on the side, but thanks to the format's growing popularity, it became a greater part of the business. As I was getting ready to open the store, more and more people were asking me, are you going to have records, we need a record store in the neighborhood, and I've really kind of expanded that inventory slowly as I've been open. Loyola student Bobby Peterson is part of this new generation of vinyl enthusiasts. He started exploring the format five years ago thanks to a healthy donation of records and hardware from his relatives. While he enjoys listening to his iPod on the go, Peterson enjoys vinyl for the more personal and physical experience it provides. I just love being able to open up the record, look at the artwork, because some of the artwork on these records are unbelievable and you just don't see that with the digital media. So there, there's just something undescribably cool about putting on a record, moving the stylus over, and listening to the record the whole way through. While CDs and digital still dwarf sales of vinyl records, vinyl is the only category where sales are growing. Arnsdorf feels the number of vinyl listeners will continue growing as more audiophiles look for the unique sound of vinyl. And there are a lot of people that grew up in an era where we were trying to get sound smaller and more convenient and there wasn't as much of a focus on the quality of sound. So people that grew up in that era are surprised that there is this other way of listening to music that's a bigger, richer, more powerful sound. With stores like Audio Archaeology making the case for vinyl, the life of the format may have a very strong side B. Tom Hush, Loyola News, Chicago. Sales of vinyl records are already up 47% over last year, according to Digital Music News, and show no signs of slowing down. In case you missed it, Krispy Kreme is rolling out a donut hot dog topped with nothing less than bacon and raspberry jam. The company partnered with minor league baseball team from uh, the Wilmington Blue Rocks to start selling the treat at its stadium. If successful, the, donate will, the donut will be sold nationwide. As if presidential elections weren't dramatic enough, Donald Trump may be running in the pack in 2016. Trump announced that he's not renewing his contract for a 15th season of The Apprentice and officially formed a presidential exploratory committee. Our very own Sister Jean was on WGN Morning News to share her NCAA March Madness bracket picks. Her picks are in line with lots of others, and she slotted Kentucky, Villanova, Duke, and Wisconsin in the top four spots. Oprah is auctioning off, Oprah is auctioning off items from her Chicago apartment. The auction will take place Saturday, April 25, at a Chicago showroom. There are 50 pieces up for auction, including paintings and furniture from Winfrey's apartment. All the proceeds will be given to the Oprah Winfrey Leadership Foundation. The foundation aims to help young women to continue their education at universities in South Africa and America. And tired of investing hours into schoolwork? Kanye West, a college dropout, is receiving an honorary degree from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. The school does not have a music program. Instead, it offers a fashion program, which may be the reasoning for the degree. Three other honorary degrees will be awarded at the commencement ceremony. Well, I guess they're giving away diplomas to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I can't really see Kanye as an art student, but that's just me. Mm. I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> whatever works for him and the artist. Whatever is works, me. whatever works. Well, congratulations, Kanye. Yes. That's our news for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with another edition of Loyola New Chicago. Have a great weekend. So many times I've been alone in my life, but now I found a reason to be smiling. You came into my world and then you turned on all the lights just when I was really getting tired of trying.